When you start Pico 8 for the first time, you'll be presented with this screen. This is where you can type in most of the file commands that you need in order to run a game or save a game or load a game or reboot the console itself. If I reboot it by typing reboot, you can see we get a standard restart for Pico 8. At this stage, I can enter the editor in Pico 8 by pressing escape. When you're in Pico 8, you can see you have a tab in this code editor window here. And I can see I'm in the code editor because I'm here with these brackets which represent the code editor. There's also a sprite editor where I can draw some sprites, which we'll talk about later. A map editor where I can actually start to develop a map for a game and sound effects and music editors, which we'll talk about much later. But for today, what we're concentrating on is how to set up a Pico 8 game. And this requires three functions. Pico 8 runs a game loop that has an update function and a draw function. And these run either 60 times a second or 30 times a second, depending on which functions you use. But in this, um, demo I'm going to be using the 60 frames a second one. Now before a Pico 8 game gets started it runs an initialization function and this is called function init and inside this is where you might declare a lot of the variables that you might need for a game to work. Now what I tend to do is I use these separate tabs along the top to separate out various functions. So I'm going to go ahead and create a Pico 8 project that prints something on the screen and has these three functions in it. So the first function is function init. And all functions, so you have the word function here, all of them have to have an end after them. In order to know what's going on here, I'm just going to write a little comment. Two dashes represents a comment. And it allows you to know what's going on in the code without Pico8 worrying what's being typed. So I can just type here, declare, if I can spell it, declare some variables. And the variable I'm going to declare is y, y equals 20. I'm going to open a new tab now and put in my update command, function update 60. This is a newish command to Pico8, and it operates at 60 ticks per second. So this um, function will run 60 times a second as long as it's not too full of code. And in here goes all the information that you might need to make your game function properly. This is where the code for the game actually goes. There's going to be one final function, function draw, and this will draw information to the screen. So we use draw to, you, to run commands that are to do with drawing. We don't mess around with anything else in this um, function. We don't put in code in here that needs to update the game loop or the game state or do anything with any of the characters. This is all about drawing, and it's a very important distinction. So in this, I'm just going to print, let's move my mouse cursor out of the way. Whoop. Hello world. And I'm gonna print it in a position somewhere on the screen. So I close my brackets there. I'm going to print it on a position, so I'm going to put it um, at an X location of, say, 20, and a Y location of Y, and I'll do it in color 12. If you remember back here in the declarations, in the function init, we declared Y to be 20. Okay, I can put some comments in here. Draw to the screen, and in here I can put a comment. Up. What's useful about these little comments at the start of each tab is if you hover hover over here, you can see what it is. So tab naught declares some variables and I can flick to it. Tab two is draw. And it allows me to keep track, so obviously you can fill up with a lot more tabs. And so putting a little comment at the top is really useful. The last thing I'm going to do is just update my y. So y equals y plus 0.1. That's a very slow change in the Y value so that we can see things happening slowly. We don't want anything to race off the screen before we've even seen it. Now, a few things to notice here. This underscore character here that you see in update 60 
and in draw and in init is crucial. If you don't include the up underscore character, then it won't work properly. Okay, so we're making sure that we've got an underscore in each of those. To run the th um, to run the, uh, the the game that we've got, it's not much of a game at the moment, but to run it, press escape and just type run. And you can see something's happening across the screen. Now this is a very important step to understand in the way that computer games work. Computer games draw to the screen, but if you don't refresh the screen every every single turn, you get this streaking effect that seems to appear here. So if I press escape and go back again, escape to go to the editor, what I need to make sure I do is before every single turn, I clear the screen. And this is crucial. It's very, very unusual to have a function draw here that doesn't have clear the screen as the first thing it does. Now what's going to happen is every single turn it's going to clear the screen and it's going to print hello world. So if I press escape and run, you can now see I've got hello world. And because of the update, which was increasing the y one at a time, point one at a time, we're slowly moving down the screen with the words hello world. Now there's a lot more we can do, but the point is that this video is all about setting up a Pico 8 program. Function init, function update 60, it's because it runs at 60 frames a second. Function draw, really, really important. Once you're happy with the piece of code, you might want to save it. So you just type save and give it a name that you want. So we could call this one, hello. And it just says saved. And then if we were to reboot the console, the next time you'd come back in, you'd have to type load, hello, it would load, and then you could go back in and edit again. So all your work is still saved. So that's the beginning of things, how to set up a basic Pico 8 program. Function init, function update 60, function draw. We'll talk a lot more about a lot of the intricacies of all of this in other videos, but this is the basics to starting out your project. Okay, happy programming folks.